Hey, it's Eric Thor, and today I want to talk about the 60 Myers Briggs personality types. What I've found is that every single story we tell ourselves, you know, from Lord of the Rings to Harry Potter to different movies and pop culture and ideas we have, you know, fairy tales that we tell each other, fairy tales that were told in ancient Greece. Uh, fairy tales told in Rome, fairy tales told across the world, all of these can be connected to the study of personality psychology and they often tell stories about different personality types. When we study them deeper we can also gain clues into how these personality types work. So that's what's so fascinating. On my new website Archetopias I went ahead and connected every personality type to one specific fantasy race. And today you're going to find out what fantasy race you are and what fantasy race you and your friends are. So we're going to talk about every one of the 16 personality types, starting with the ESFP. The ESFP personality type I connect to the nymph character in uh, fantasy and fiction. The nymph, uh, the seductress, the person that lives in nature, the being that... Uh, uh, often represents nature and love of nature and love of life. The character that uh, enjoys uh, wrapping people around their fingers, the person that likes to be seen and heard, the person likes that likes to be on stage and perform, a lover of music and the arts. The nymph is a perfect representation of the ESFP personality type. Next is the ESTP, the satire. I think the satire or the kentaur is a great example of an ESTP, a lover of the good things in life, wine, drinks, partying, parents, families. Uh, you know, ESTPs, they are very familiar beings that uh, really enjoy good healthy competition with other people, work and life itself. They are typically seen as people that work hard and play hard and that's just the ESTP mentality and I think the satire from ancient Greece uh, really captures that. Next we have the ENTP personality type that I connect to the troll <laughs> and this is uh, beyond just the meme of trolling it's uh, connected to a person that's light-hearted yet intelligent the person that can uh, use wits and intelligence to uh, play with words, with life and with uh, everything and everyone around them. The ENTP is somebody intelligent and inventive and creative and the troll is all these things. In uh, trolls and fiction can be divided into two groups, you know, giants that are ESTJs and trolls that are ENTP. And the troll I feel is uh, Somebody that loves to just dance and uh, uh, try new things and to explore life and to really just uh, uh, experience and try out new things and use their wit to survive and deal with life. Next we have the ENFP personality type who I connect to the elvish mythology or the mythology of the elf. I feel the elf is a creature that loves nature and often lives close in proximity to nature, yet a person that has been able to domesticate nature and to tame it. So a lot of time the elf is the tamer of nature and of animals. It is the person that is able to live with wisdom and with ethics and high integrity. So a combination of freedom and integrity is key to this uh, archetype. The elf is often the person of high intelligence and a person who prides themselves on living responsibly. They don't just immerse themselves in life, but they also actively try to guide and shape life and to oversee life all around them to make sure everybody is healthy and that everything is thriving. We have... Uh, with ENFJs, I went decided to get a bit cre creative and I decided to um, turn the ENFJ into the genie. So the ENFJ is the genie archetype, uh, the genie in a bottle, the person who grants wishes, the person that transforms, the person that uh, guides and uh, coaches and inspires the people around them. The genie is often a person who is able to have a great influence on other people with, through their voice and through magic and through uh, just wizarding tricks. And th beyond that, they are often people that change the nature of things. They can transform you or themselves into different things. 
and turn you into something else or bring out your inner hidden potential. Then we have the ENTJ personality type, the Goblin. I believe the Goblin is a great representative of the ENTJ. The Goblin is somebody who is often business oriented and somebody who loves money, but also somebody who loves creativity and innovation and transformation. Because the Goblin is not necessarily as bulky as the sensing ESTJ personality type, they have to rely on their wit and the sometimes magic to survive. They have to uh, make sure that they uh, study and understand things fully. They have to make sure that they uh, figure out how things work and they have to spot new trends and to use the world against them in some positive way. Second, uh, well, seventh, we have the giant personality type. The giant represents strength, power, productivity, the power to make anything happen. You know, not just the intelligence in being able to build or construct or to create things, but also strength in the power of being able to carry it out and carry a mission out through the end. Uh, being able to hold up your own, to be able to be independent and strong and re self-reliant. The giant, I believe, represents all these things and also has that intimidation factor that we all can recognize in ESTJ personality types. Uh, number eight, we have the mermaid, who I would connect to the ESFJ personality type. I feel in the mermaid we have something nymph-like in the sense of being able to charm the people around them, the, per the ability to thrive interpersonally and the ability to enjoy life and to just be free and to enjoy life as it is. But also we have uh, a tendency to uh, words influence and uh, often mermaids are people that often have thriving cultures around them and people that uh, manage and oversee culture and uh, social life in their society and so I think mermaids fit that pretty well. Then we have the INFP fairy archetype so INFPs I have already listed as fairies in other videos uh, and I still feel that fits 100% with INFP nature. The INFP the fairy archetype is often childlike, innocent, idealistic, free-spirited, uh, somebody that uh, represents wisdom, guidance, encouragement, somebody that represents the ability to, you know, tame others and to turn like the most aggressive animal or person or annoying uh, or difficult person into somebody nice and friendly and s more meek. Uh, the INFP, the fairy, is somebody that uh, can inspire peace and also a symbol of healing. And I think that fits INFPs great. INTPs I have listed as gnomes. And the gnomes in, uh, for example, World of Warcraft and in other stories, they're often very intelligent. They are often tinkerers and mechanics. They come up with various crazy gadgets, some which blow up, some which work perfectly. and. Uh, they are able to use technology and wit to more than make up for the lack of height or strength or power physically. The ISTP personality type, the Minotaur, symbolizing not just intelligence but also patience and discipline and the ability to uh, work patiently at a task for a longer time. The Minotaurs, they are people that are self-reliant, people that are analytical, and people that are strong and powerful. They often thrive in martial arts, they often do well in physical activity as well as mental activity, and often rely on a combination of both to do what they want. The ISFP I connect with the Dryad race. The Dryads, they are a mix of forest and a mix of person, a person that represents growth and a person that represents spirituality and life. Uh, the ISFP is uh, like its ESFP cousin, a person that uh, enjoys and lives close to nature and appreciates life the way it is, but also a person that uh, 
I see as a healer and a person that I see as more withdrawn and more shy. Alongside that we have the Trent race, the ISFJ race, the tree spirit, tree folk. The ISFJs, they are miraculously patient, they are the ideal support figures, they are, the be uh, they are people we can truly rely on and rest on, people that always uh, have a positive uh, vibe, they radiate outwardly, and uh, proficiency as healers and uh, as helpers and as friends, they are very loyal, they are very uh, down to earth, and they are very patient people. Next to that we have the golem race, the rock human race. The golems, they are very much uh, the most responsible of all 16 personality types. Responsible in the sense of carrying their own weight, never being uh, somebody that other people have to help or support or be there for. The ISTJs, they can carry their own, they can be their own person, they can uh, thrive uh, as architects and as builders, they have some of the most amazing cities, they have some of the most uh, uh, amazing forms of architecture, they are often very practical. You can say they have a strong work ethic and that they do their best to understand the laws of nature and of how things are and to uh, live by those laws rather than to seek to go against them. Besides the golems, we have the INTJs, who I have put in the undead race, the necro race, the skeleton race. The INTJs, I believe, they definitely have that, you know. There is a sub-branch of INTJs that like to dress provocatively and to really go against culture and to uh, have a, like a style of black and uh, of uh, hard rock and metal to them. And um, I think that's just how some INTJs deal with having social expectations on them. They create a strong personal culture that goes against the norms and what we can expect. And the undead race, they are definitely a race of intelligent uh, and uh, witty and uh, wise and uh, initiative rich people. They definitely uh, take command of. Uh, the world around them and of themselves and they are definitely an aggressive race driven towards control and power but they're also a race that seeks to wield power with responsibility and uh, a race that seeks to uh, rule with intelligence and logic rather than with feelings so they are pe people that can set these things aside that can set their own physical needs aside can set their own emotions aside and focus on what is best Next to them they have the brother type INFJs and INFJs I have set as the avatar race. So avatar races they're a bit more towards the spirituality edge, they're healers, uh, they are lower on intelligence than INTJ but higher on charisma so they are better as influencers and advisors. They are typically people that seek to guide and influence the world around them in a positive way. They seek to use their wisdom and uh, careful thought and foresight to influence and uh, to give people the right information so to help people understand the world better and to help uh, the different races get along better with one another. So that's the every race for every MBTI type. Did you have a race that you relate to better? Do you agree with these races or would you change anything? Would you put switch anything around? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.